okay so what is data analytics so to keep things simple i would say data analytics is nothing but analyzing data so is it how sim is that how simple it is yes it is so what is analyzing in the first place now so analyzing is nothing but examining now what is examining examining is nothing but surveying so if you guys are from india you, we all know that there might there will be people coming to our house to survey for the survey details and all right and also if you if you people are from anywhere around the world we all know the online surveys and all so what exactly happens in that online survey they collect data from you and they do something with that data right so that is what exactly is data analytics so to keep things simple again i would say data analytics is nothing but telling a story with data so uh, why data analytics is important and why do we need it why do we have to do analysis on data in the first place so let's take simple examples again so let's say i own a fireworks shop okay fireworks shop okay so i know that during diwali which is an indian festival my mark my sales will be high and also i know that during new year new year eve my sales will be high and how do i know it i know it because from my past experiences right maybe from the past 5 to 10 years i know that my business will be very huge during diwali or let's say new year's eve or something right now let's consider it in let's consider one more example of data analytics okay so let's say now i own a sweet shop okay so i know that during festivals or during uh, any important occasions i know that my business will be very high and how do i know it it's the same again it's from the previous examples past ex past experiences right so now let's consider one more example uh which is the last one and uh let's con let's take the current situation into our consideration which is covid 19 right so we have been seeing news and all we have been seeing like lot of people predicting that this country might get a lot of you know covid cases and all and how do they do that right so this so all this comes under data analytics so data analytics is nothing but telling a story with data okay so is it just a story no it's a meaningful story with which you will make decisions and predictions okay so so before you can tell the story with data you have to process the data okay so in the process in the processing step you will be having identifying the data cleaning the data transforming the data modeling the data see you can't directly get the raw data and do whatever you want right you have to change it in such a way so that you can make a beautiful story with it right so the process which is involved is identifying cleaning transforming and modeling data okay so these four steps you will perform on the data and then only you will be able to make reports from the data and from these reports will use will get the predict will make the predictions or will make an analysis of the data okay so there are five categories of data analytics right so one is descriptive analysis so analytics so what is descriptive analytics it's nothing but uh, the first example which i have given you the fireworks shop okay so it's like descriptive analysis helps answer questions about what has happened so what has already happened so with that will answer the questions like okay let's say during diwali uh, in past year 2019 uh, my fireworks shop has been very very i mean has been has done a very good great job i mean my business was very good so how did i tell it right because of my past experience right and that's all comes under descriptive analysis analytics okay so next one is diagnostic analytics okay now diagnostic analytics is 
user to it's user to tell you like why things happen like why at this particular moment only my business has you know uh, performed very well why so all the questions like related to why are answered in diagno diagno diagnostic anal analytics okay now predictive analytics the name suggests this right so uh, prediction about the future like what happens in the future what will happen if i do something like that so what will happen if i do something like this okay how will it affect my business and all so all that comes under predictive analytics now prescriptive prescriptive analytics now prescriptive analytics are things like you know if i do this i have to attain this goal and if i do this i have to attain this goal so it helps you answers like what actions should you have to take that what exact action you have to take to achieve your goal let's say i have uh, sold around uh, 100k of my fireworks in previous year and now i want to sell it around 200k i want to make profit around 200k this time so how to achieve it so that is what prescriptive analytics will tell you okay so now cognitive analytics so what is cognitive analytics cognitive analytics is something like you know uh during the process at times everything will not go always go as expected right so there might be situations where you know uh things get tough and you don't know how to handle it so cognitive analytics actually helps you to learn what might happen if circumstances change okay and how do you handle these situations so they help you like what if something happens how will i handle it okay so it's like okay so what if uh, something happens let's say i have put all my fireworks out in the sun and all of a sudden you know cloud shows up and it it's it rains okay it heavily rains so what will i do should i need a backup for that or how will i compensate my loss all that comes under cognitive analytics okay so now there are actually actually data has been a buzzword for you know decades decades now right so is that i mean what are like with this being very important with data being very important from very small scale industries to the large scale industries out there uh, there are many roles that have been emerged so the five main roles which have been identified in data are business analyst data analyst data engineer data scientist database administrator so let's just go through like what are these roles like what are, what do they do and all okay so business analyst so business analyst is someone who looks at all the reports i mean all the data analysis last part okay he analyzes all the reports and he stays with the business okay so he tells the business i mean at, he tells the business owner or someone saying that you know maybe this step we have to perform this step to achieve the goals and all something like that okay so now what is data analyst that's what we are actually trying to figure out now so what is data analyst so that is what we are actually going to do in this course right so data analyst is someone who takes the raw data and converts it into a meaningful story right so that is what data analyst is so actually uh, most most often uh, business analyst and data analyst both the roles are been done by a single particular person in most of the companies okay and next comes data engineer so who exactly is data engineer so data engineer works on transferring data i mean manages about transferring data from one place to other place like for example you know uh from one place to other place let's say uh, i have to transfer data from mysql to sql right mysql to sql so uh there are many steps i mean there are many ways how you can transfer data but data engineer actually you know uh concentrates on how ex i mean concentrates on how should he you know uh, how should he maintain the integrity of the data and how should he transfer from one place to other place secure securely and cost effectiveness all the things have been taken care by data engineer now comes data scientist so data scientist also does 
the job of data analyst but in a different way so what exactly happens so data analyst has to do all these jobs okay so like descript from descriptive analytics to maybe cognitive analytics and all but data analyst is more of descriptive anal analytics okay descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics but if you ask me data analyst is not very much into predictive analytics prescriptive analytics and cognitive analytics whereas a data scientist is more into you know predictive analytics prescriptive analytics cognitive analytics stuff like that so he does all the machine learning stuff and also you know uh, deep learning etc so that he can predict what has happened he'll design a pattern and he'll come up with a pattern and he'll tell uh, the business uh, owner saying that you know this ha might happen if you do this so that is the role of data scientist okay now database administrator so who exactly is database administrator now the one who develops the database the schema like uh, the relations between i mean uh, for development of the application there will be a database right so the one who develops the database and the one who develops the schema around it and the one who uh, thinks about all the relationships between them and also how to back up the data and all so those guys are database administrators okay now moving on we'll see uh, what are the tasks performed by data analyst okay so there are actually five tasks uh, in which the data analyst uh has to perform and those five tasks are uh prepare model visualize analyze and manage okay so these are the five tasks that a data analyst will perform okay so what exactly happens in prepare now in prepare uh actually this step in this step data analyst has to take the raw data right without data i mean you can't do anything at the end of the day so yeah he'll be taking the raw data let it be from anywhere let it be from a sql server let it be from a simple excel sheet wherever it is he'll take a raw data and he'll turn it into something that is something that is useful to model the data okay so what exactly happens in this we'll go through it okay so it involves uh, ensuring the integrity of the data which is security for example you can't take the sales data of your uh, uh, you know uh, company and and take it right away and store it in power bi or whatever tool you use and use it directly maybe the company norms doesn't allow it right so things like that okay and next correcting wrong or inaccurate data so yeah even he has to correct the wrong and inaccurate data as well after taking the data and now uh, identifying missing data so if there are any null values or if there are any you know no values in columns and all he has to identify it and he has to take some particular action so that it will improve the performance of the reports at the end of the day okay so now converting data from one structure to another structure or from one type to another type so what does that mean let's say i have a column uh, for for some purpose okay for for some purpose uh, let's say my uh, developer who is developing the administr i mean who is developing the application uh, what he has done is uh, he is storing uh, you know numeric values as text in the database which is pretty rare which doesn't happen but let's consider it okay so he is doing that now it doesn't make sense right i mean okay uh, he did he did it fine but to get the reports performance high performance of the reports you again have to change the structure okay i mean you have to declare it as again saying that it's not a string or something it's not a text or something it's an numbers okay so it's an integer or may, maybe byte or whatever it is okay so that's what this step means and next and yeah he also has to do in this particular step a, a data analyst also has to do uh, also has the job of making the data readable okay so he is responsible for making the data readable as well okay so why does he have to make the data readable because uh, 
while showing the reports okay the data should be understandable and it should be I mean it should be understandable by any people right whoever look at the report it's all about telling the story at the end of the day with your data right so whoever looks your looks at, looks at your report they should understand it so that's why he has to make the data readable as well okay so now the next step which is modeling the data okay so now what exactly is data modeling okay so after getting let's say let's say I am the data analyst okay and I'll get and I'll get data from various sources not just a simple database okay so let's say my HR at my company they are storing all the employees data in you know uh, Excel sheet because they are not much uh, into this database stuff and all right they are not much into SQL server and all right uh, and let's say the same company which I'm working in okay one of my developer has developed an application from which I get some other data from the SQL server okay so now what I have to do to get to I have to get data from both SQL server or uh, and also Excel sheet right and I have to relate them right because at the end of the day you know both data is about all the employees at my workplace right so and I have to relate them so just getting the data is not enough you have to uh, relate the data I mean relate the tables so with Excel there will be a table created in the Power BI and also with the SQL Server database table there will be another table created by, by, by the Power BI so now we have to create a relationship between these two tables okay so that's what modeling is and modeling is not about exactly that it's a little more to it uh, you will be you know uh, having measures you know measures are something I mean adding extra columns and all and also you will be having measures so what exactly is measures so measures is you know converting your data applying formulas mathematical formulas and getting the and deriving the expected values from it so that is what is measures is and also you can add custom columns custom calculations you can do a lot more in modeling okay so now while getting data, like if you're at the end of the day if your reports do not perform well okay you have to revisit prepare and model step because these are the two main steps that will uh, you know that will uh, impact the performance of your reports okay so if you have not done properly prepare and model these two steps you have to revisit it again okay so now prepare and model right so most of the data analyst as a data analyst our most of the time we will be doing preparing and modeling data only okay and very less time on visualization and very less time on uh, not very less time a very huge time on analyze and yeah less time on manage as well okay so now let's go to visualization now what exactly is visualization so visualization is something this is actually the step where your data comes into life and you will be able to tell a story with it so the story which we have been talking for since last 20 minutes or so uh, that that story you will be able to tell it using visualizations so what exactly is visualization it's some chats or you know graphs of all your data pictorial representation of your data okay so that is what is visualizations okay and it's not only just the pictures but also you can uh, you know interact with it there is user interaction with it as well so yeah that is what is visualization and next step is analyze now now that everything is done now that we have done preparing data we have done modeling data and we have also created visualizations the next step which we have to do is analyzing the data I mean analyzing the reports now as a data analyst you are supposed to analyze it right I mean I told you guys that uh, as a data analyst your most of the stuff I mean your most of the job lies around descriptive analytics and also you know uh, kind of diagnostic analytics and less into predictive analytics perspective analytics and cognitive analytics right so but during analysis phase you are supposed to you know give your inputs for predictive analytics and also the other other analytics as well right 
I mean, it's not just, you know, descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics. You have to do your best with predictive analytics and perspective analytics as well. Though it's out of your scope, though you have limited knowledge on machine learning algorithms and all, you have to come up with, I mean, you should be able to at least give your inputs to the data uh, scientist, at least in your organization so that he will come up with, you know, proper reports and all. I mean, he there, there, there might be useful, useful inputs at the end of the day, right? So, so that is what analyzes. So you'll analyze, you'll answer all the questions that have been asked by your uh, lead or CEO or whoever it is and you'll help your company grow its business and also you'll help the fellow data people let's say data scientist and by giving inputs of predictive analytics and stuff okay so now the last step which is manage so now if you are using i mean uh, in this thing we are using power bi which we all know so we are this uh, whole session this whole class is about power bi right so we'll be using power bi so in power bi if you are a data analyst who is using power bi okay there will be many resources apart from you know reports and all so reports are the visualizations which you will do and uh, dashboards are the places where you will put all these reports and from dashboards you will be sharing the visualizations with everyone in office or all around okay so next comes workspaces we'll get i mean we'll look into it when time comes it's not uh, something to talk about right now so yeah data sets so data sets also you have to manage i mean if your database let's say you have a database i mean let's say you are getting data from a sql server right and let's say your data there is like very huge okay you can't you know you can't directly get your data you have to prepare it model it and take only the columns which you need for analysis and try to reduce try to keep try to keep the data as minimum as possible right so that's where you have to manage your data sets as well and also he's responsible i mean a data analyst is also responsible for managing you know uh, reports dashboards apart from that he's also responsible for security of your assets okay so these data sets these reports or these dashboards okay or even workspaces okay they can be shared from with anyone okay they can literally be shared with anyone so you have to be very careful in security and all like whom you are sharing it with and you have to be you know very i mean prompt in sharing things with people okay you can't just give your data set away to someone else okay someone from outside company or something okay maybe you just want to give reports but not your data sets okay so yeah so this is so at the end of the day data analyst is someone okay who will take the raw data from anywhere it is no matter what the source is no matter what the data source is okay he'll take the raw data and it'll convert it into a meaningful story, a meaningful report with which the business will be able to, you know, uh, perform uh, important data, I mean, important decision making and also predict how their business is going to be in the future. Okay. So, okay. So now what exactly is Power BI? So Microsoft Power BI is, a, in simple terms, Microsoft Power BI is a tool which is used for data analytics, right? As simple as that. And that's why you people are here, right? So, yeah, so Microsoft Power BI, let's just go through the definition once. So Microsoft Power BI is a collection of software services, apps, and connectors that work together to turn unrelated sources of data into consistent, visually immersive, and interactive insights what exactly does that mean so microsoft power bi allows you to collect data from various sources not just a, no it is not limited to only a single source okay let's say uh, let's say few of my i mean let's say few of my tables are in uh, sql server and few of my tables are in my sql server which doesn't happen in real world or which might happen but yeah 
so it's not limited to only you know one particular source of data so the data is collected from many sources okay so and at the end of the day you'll use this tool and build meaningful insights to people okay for people now so so yeah let's just go through what all is there in power bi okay so there are actually three main com i mean yeah there are actually two main components in power bi not three which i will say so those two components are you know power bi desktop application and reminding you guys again power bi desktop application is a you know um, executable application on your own and it's only and it's only available on windows and it's not available on mac linux or any other os okay and if you guys are planning to use power bi on any other os you have to use your you know uh, parallel os thing uh, hypervisor virtualization okay so yeah use that with the help of those you have to build a you know o windows os and on the top of that windows os only you will be able to run microsoft power bi okay as of now it's not available on mac linux or whatever it is it's only available on windows okay so now oh so it's a desktop application so what does this desktop application do we'll look into it again okay so now there is also an online software as a service which is called as power bi service okay now what exactly happens in with this service we'll get into that as well and then there are mobile and then there are mobile apps mobile power apps and they are available on all the you know platforms all the os so now what exactly happens i mean i'll i'll give you the flow of power bi first i mean what exactly happens when you're trying to you know get the data and prepare it model it analyze it okay how do you prepare reports and all i'll give you the common flow which exactly i mean which normally happens around okay so what exactly happens is first you'll be using microsoft power bi desktop application okay this is power bi desktop okay this one around okay i'll be will be getting more into it as the session goes but yeah so first thing what we'll use what we'll use is uh, power bi desktop okay so this power bi desktop will in this power bi desktop will collect the data will model the data will prepare it will model it okay will also make reports on it okay we'll do everything what not we'll do almost everything on power bi desktop okay and then okay and then after creating all the reports in this is power bi desktop okay uh, i know the image is small but yeah pardon me so this is power bi desktop okay so you will be creating all the reports you will be getting data you will be adding relations you will be adding all the mathematical mathematical expressions which i have been talking about and you will do everything what not you will do everything on this only power bi desktop okay and from this power bi desktop once the reports are ready okay we will we will publish them to power bi service okay this is online cloud service okay uh, that's what software as a service means but it's not just a cloud service there's more to it we'll get back to it again so yeah so so from here we'll we'll publish all the reports to power bi service and once we have published all the reports to power bi service from there you can uh, you know uh, you can view i mean anyone can view the reports okay not just the people who are in your organization we can share it with people around the world okay we can integrate the reports in a website we can integrate the reports in any application okay we can share it with anyone okay not just the people who are in your organization remember this as well so okay so now as venkat asked us um only data analysts are supposed to use power bi no let's say uh, i don't know if you guys i mean i don't know i assume that you guys don't know it but uh, uh, i am a technical lead of a website i mean web application called uh, azure a to z okay so uh, only i mean uh, only data analyst use power bi no as a as a website developer even i use it i i'm keen to know you know i'm very keen that uh, uh, how things are happening on my website or how are how are people behaving okay so how many people are taking tests or how many people are you know uh, going through something and all okay 
uh, so all these insights how will I get it with the data analytics only right so and also uh, it's not just used by data analysts at the end of the day you know even a sales executive from your company can use it and he can view a report on sales and he can say that okay oh my god the sales this week are very low we have to work hard and you know get the sales up so it's it's been it's used by everyone and also your ceo can use it and see how things are happening on your you know application and all so yeah but the major work on the analytics is done by data analyst that's true but it's been used by everyone okay not just a data analyst it's been used by everyone okay now uh okay this is just the common flow which i have been telling you all these days i mean all this time okay so uh, first you will get into i mean you'll get all the data to probably a desktop and then you'll get all the data into i mean you'll prepare it you'll model it you'll make all the visualizations and you'll publish it where will you publish you'll publish it to power bi service so after publishing it to it to power bi service what will you do from there you can import it to power bi mobile app i mean in, in using power bi mobile app you can actually see all these things which are being published here but also not just the power bi mobile app you can integrate the reports to anywhere you can integrate the reports to your you know xamarin mobile applications and also the web applications okay so it's not limited okay so yeah now so the building blocks of power bi so there are actually five blocks five main parts of power bi so what are those visualizations so visualizations are nothing but you know all this graphs and all we have been talking about since past one hour or half an hour or so so all these are called visualizations okay and data sets so what is data set so whenever you collect data from anywhere sql server microsoft excel or no sql you know azure cosmos db mongo db whatever it is okay you collect data okay and then that data will be stored in power bi as well a local copy of it once you prepare and model it a local copy of it will be once you prepare it not model it i'm sorry yeah so once you prepare it a local copy of data is also stored in power bi okay so this local copy which is stored in power bi that is called as data set and it and it has you know data as well it has size it which is up to you know uh, something let's say a few mb or few gb or something okay so but yeah this data set which is stored in power bi is compressed data okay microsoft not the exact data which is stored on your uh, you know uh, sql server or excel sheet or anything it's pretty much com compressed and yeah there is there are advantages to it okay so okay so next comes reports so what are reports reports are nothing but collection of all the visualizations okay all these visualizations together are called reports and if you can see i don't know if it's uh, visible or not but yeah if you can see there is a thing called info new hires actives and separations i guess yeah separations uh, bad hires new hire scorecard something okay these are all pages okay so in new hires page we have these visualizations okay so report is not just about collection of uh, visualizations in one page okay it's about collection of the whole visualizations in all the pages multiple pages not just single page okay uh, we'll add more to it once we start working on power bi in the upcoming sessions but yeah as of now just understand that visualize i mean reports are nothing but collection of visualizations okay the collection of visualizations and not just visualizations from single page but also all the pages okay multiple pages or multiple pages okay next so now dashboards what exactly are dashboards i've told you that we'll be publishing uh, power bi all the things which i have done in power bi desktop will be publishing it to power bi service okay so now in power bi service okay we'll be having a thing called dashboards okay so all the reports which you want you'll pin it to the dashboard and from that and from the dashboard you'll be able to share people okay i mean you'll be able to share that dashboard to your uh, colleagues at the office or at the same time you can share it to the people whole all around the world okay 
and there are things how you can do it i'll we'll get to that okay so now uh, the last thing which is tiles so what is what exactly is a tile tile is nothing but a single visualization okay let's say this is one visualization right so this single visualization is called a tile okay so why do we have to bother about tile because uh, tile you know uh, from this page i might like this tile i mean let's say uh, i am the data analyst and one of you uh, are my superiors okay so i have done this whole page okay of visualizations okay but you might like only two tiles in it and let's consider those two tiles as this one and this one and you don't want these tiles so what will you do you will only pin these two tiles to the dashboard okay you will only get these two tiles from the report to the dashboard and you will share only those two tiles with the people and these three tiles you will ask me to improve on it or something like that okay so that is what tiles is okay so to i mean uh, this uh, report i mean this thing uh, showing you all confusing so i'll be showing you guys uh, app i mean uh, power bi service as well like how things have been you know uh,